Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is not actually Garbage Hard. No. Stuff. This is like a special bulletin, special alert type thing. Um, yeah. Long story Kinda short, <laughs> literally in like 15 minutes, we're actually late yeah. uh, as we're trying to do this. We are going to be heading out to Britannia Theater here in New Orleans to catch a midnight showing of The Room. We're in for a treat. I can tell. If you don't know what the room is, my first advice to you is hit the Google. Yeah, um, a, a lot, lot of better reviewers than us have reviewed this movie. That's not a very high standard. <laughs> uh, yes, but indeed, a nostalgia critic did a very famous one that was unfortunately removed by a questionable copyright takedown. Uh, Obscurus Lupa did one that's very, very good. Uh, literally, just about anyone who reviews bad movies at all has done this movie. It is probably the most notorious movie of the last decade. Probably. Uh, released in 2003, it stars, is directed, written by, produced by... You know it's going to be good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a personal piece. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau is the guy's name. A barely intelligible, supposedly Frenchman who... Supposedly from our fair city. We're not going to touch that one. I was going to try to keep that one under wraps. <laughs> well, maybe that's why they're showing it here in New Orleans. Maybe. But, indeed, this movie is literally notorious. In fact, it's so notorious that when it was first released, Why So had it billed as a drama. <laughs> yeah. He has since changed the promotion, <laughs> changed the IMDb, changed everything about this movie to read that it is a dark comedy. That tells you about all you need to know. That's probably a good move on his part, though. Yeah, it probably was a very smart move, actually. Probably the f smartest thing he did in relation to this movie. I guess we'll be able to say more about that after we actually see yeah. it. But, I mean, this movie is legendary, and it's something that I'm actually very scared to see. I mean, we just printed our list of bad movies we've seen. Yeah. I don't think we've got anything that quite reaches down to this caliber. I mean, some have said this is the Troll 2 of this decade, or the uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space for this decade. I think that might actually be accurate from what clips I've seen and so forth. But mm -hmm. So, we're going to go to the Britannia in literally just a few minutes. We're taking this camera with us, yes, you camera, I'm pointing to you for no mm -hmm. reason whatsoever, and we're going to shoot some footage of the crowd, talk to some people maybe, yeah. and see what the hell's going on at a midnight showing of the room, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Yep. We are at the Britannia Theater in New Orleans, Louisiana, built in 19, opened in 1915 I should say, it is currently the oldest movie theater in New Orleans and the only single screen movie theater operating all of Louisiana. Uh, we are here for a midnight showing of the room. We're about 20 minutes before the doors open. Doors open at midnight. Actual movie starts at 12.15. Already a good, healthy crowd. People are throwing footballs here. These guys are having a really good blast. Um, just chilling out, relaxing, drinking a few beers, doing your best Tommy Wiseau impersonation. So we're going to go out, see if we can talk to a few people, and maybe uh, learn what the heck this is all about in their eyes. So, Britannia Theater, New Orleans, Louisiana, just uh, about 20 minutes shy of midnight. So, can, can, hang on. So, what are you guys' names? Uh, I'm Steve you can Dingus. Be, you can be whatever you want, I really don't care. I'm Steve Dingus. <laughs> that's fine. Sam Hingus. Alright, that's what fine by me. GarbageHorror.com. <laughs> so, what brings you two guys here tonight? Uh, just find cinematography. Yes. I, the, I like the, sexy dresses. All uh, right. So sexy. My name is Lisa. I yeah. noticed you're rocking the red dress today, man. Nice. Looks yeah. good on you. Thank you. You're so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Tommy, by the way. I know. It was purely accidental, unfortunately. Everyone's looking at me like I'm a Tommy Wiseau impersonator, which is fine. Uh, real fast, can I get your best? You're tearing me apart, Lisa. You're tearing me apart, Lisa! <laughs> Alright, your turn. Do I have to do the same line? You don't have to. You can do whatever line you want, whatever line fits you. Um, oh, hi, dog. Wait. <laughs> I did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Oh, Keep man. the change. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Everyone is looking at me like I'm a freaking Tommy Wiseau impersonator. Uh, yeah, it's going to be one of those I days. I was going to say you're tearing me apart, but everybody's shy. What's your name, good sir? My name is Christopher McFarlane. And what brings you out at midnight in this hellhole of a street in New Orleans? To see the classic The Room. The classic The Room. And what bring, what, what most entices you about The Room? Just the brill sheer brilliance of it. Ah. It's, it's an it's epic tale. I mean. Epic tale. I mean, and to see it with a bunch of 
people. I, I know, mean, like, and the big screen, no less. Big screen. It's going to be an awe-inspiring event. Okay, what's your favorite line from it? You can see what's my favorite line. Um, and can you give it I got to me? The, you know, I'm telling you right now. All right, go for it. Um, you'll see, I got the results of the test back. Mm. I definitely have breast cancer. Sorry, man. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. What's your name? My name is Rachel. You can make up a name. I really don't care. <laughs> if anything you want. So you're here tonight to see the room. Yeah. And you just said you've never seen it. So we're going to catch up with you after the show. What are you expecting, though? What have you heard? What are you well, I've fearing? heard some, like, good things about it. Okay. First of all, I've heard it's dark comedy. I'm into dark comedy. Yeah, Usually cool. dark comedies are stupid on purpose. Yes. Which is great. <laughs> Second okay. of all, I heard that there was like a love triangle involved. And I love love triangles. They fascinate me. Love triangles are indeed so awesome. Overall, I'll be very happy I came to watch this movie. Alright. Well, we're going to touch base with you afterwards and see if it holds up. See if you're still saying that. Alright. Alright, see you in a little bit, Rachel. See you. And we're back. From the room. From the room. That sounds less exciting than it actually was. We're back from yeah. the room. But yes, indeed, we are back. Had a great time. Yes. Met some cool peoples. Yes. Um, heard about a million uh, Tommy Wiseau impersonations while we were. Some good, yeah. some less than good. Saw a football go through a car window. That was kind of Unfortunate. epic. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't get the video of that. We were actually recording no. another interview at the time that happened. Right. And we didn't have the camera pointing the right way. So, no, you did not get to see any glass shatterage. On you may that. be able to hear it, though. You may be able to hear it. We may have to include that clip. Yeah, anyway. Maybe we'll include it at the end of this interview if we have it. Yeah. If we have it. Anyway. But, no, um, the movie is what the reviewer said it was, primarily. The inaudible lines, the... Lack of understanding of how humans interpret emotions and... Well, one of the things that I don't know if this happens at other theaters, we didn't hear the lines. And yeah. had, they had to turn on the subtitles just so that we would know what was going on. Not that it improved anything. <laughs> apparently in New Orleans theaters, and this is awesome, this is one of the reasons I love the city, they get a little rowdy at these things. And they got extremely rowdy at these things. And I, I come at this as a veteran. Right. I've been to several midnight showings of Rocky Horror. Yes, we went including to, in New Orleans. Including one in the same theater in New Orleans. You know, not that long ago, like six months ago we were right. there. And uh, we went to Pink Flamingo's midnight showing. Yes. Very similar setup. This was the rowdiest crowd I've seen in a movie theater by a factor of at least yeah. two. Yeah, maybe three. Hundreds of spoons. Yeah, I mean, the, the very first time they were throwing the plastic... I don't know if I fully understand the plastic spoon throwing, but hey... Well, um, the metal spoon throwing as the yeah, case I mean, maybe no, somebody br brought a couple. And I meant to bring the one I picked up off the floor into here, but, um, you know, screw we'll it. Get a, we'll get a picture we'll of it later. We'll get a picture of it later. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, the first time the spoons were launched, the yeah. sky went black. Or white, since they were white plastic. White plastic. It, it darkened the whole theater. It was just like, yeah. it was like those scenes in the, uh, the old war movies where the, the archers fire the arrows and you see the wave coming and it's like... They block out the sun. It was like that. Is there a garbage horror where plastic spoons attack people? Let's hope not. Okay. Good, moving on. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. the crowd was definitely the most interesting part of the whole yeah. night. I really wish, obviously we couldn't do any shooting inside the cinema. I snapped right. a couple photos of the aftermath. Mm -hmm. Um, here's a photo where you can see of the uh, spoons on the stage area yeah. just strewn everywhere. And that is actually after people had snatched up like a, a quarter of them. Yeah. I, mean, I, I got there late in the game because they what was going on is they were launching the spoons in waves and they had designated spoon gatherers, I guess, in the crowd yeah. who were going up, grabbing armfuls and chucking them back into the audience. So it was just this perpetual life cycle of the plastic spoon going <laughs> to and from the space. Like it's the never-ending spoon. Yeah, and you've got to feel bad with those poor spoons. You're like, okay, we're safe now. <laughs> ah! Ah! Yeah. But, yeah, and it was a bit also interesting because there was a... Uh, the Britannia's got the big high balcony on Right. It, and you had people throwing footballs back and forth. They were doing the same stuff they were doing outside. Right. But doing it in the theater, to and from the balcony. Yeah, to and from, there's actually a stage in front of the screen mm -hmm. for the movie, so they would get up on the stage and catch the football in front of the movie and then throw it back up to the balcony yeah. and come back down. And, and with all the commentary and so forth, you couldn't hear nearly any of the movie. 
No. Uh, uh, lots of commentary, lots of yelling, lots of shouting, air <laughs> horns were involved. You know, it was and, exciting. And it was interesting because someone on the outside when we were going in, made, we overheard the comment basically, mm -hmm. that this is the Rocky Horror for this generation. They said this generation. I'm frankly sick of saying that this decade. We'll put it in terms of years. Right. Um, I disagreed with that on the way in because I did not mm -hmm. see how this could reach that level of cult. No. Apparently, I was dead wrong. Yeah, you um, are. I mean, yeah, the uh, the props are not as defined. The, no. uh, what you're supposed to do is not as clearly defined. No. And there is some Rocky Horror elements, like everyone yelling slut when the right, Lisa's on the screen. Right. You, you see this, like Janet and the Rocky Horror. So, yeah, you see some pull from that. But it definitely was a lot like a Rocky Horror experience. Yeah. And, I mean, if we go back, we might. I'm considering going back to tomorrow's Midnight Show. I'm bringing a whole <laughs> crap load of plastic spoons if I do. I'm gonna... Yeah, and we're thinking about doing a, <laughs> a zombie Tommy Wiseau yeah. over here. You gotta get a fake gun for it and just. Uh, <laughs> brains, I have none. No. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the room, as far as the movie itself, it's. Not the worst I've seen, I've got to be honest. No, I can at least find something I'm sure in there to say good about it. Yeah, if I had to say stuff that was good about it, it was very artistically shot. It had a, a, a style to it. It might not have made it for a very... It did have a style. <laughs> it might not have made a very good movie, but uh, it was... At least you could tell they did a high-quality production. The money did go to cameras and lighting and things like that. Mm -hmm. Not so much the sets. Not so much the sets or the writing or the actors or <laughs> anything else. And I, I guess the biggest beef I had with it, and as far as what makes it such a terrible movie, is the uh, complete lack of understanding of human relationships. It was like a, I, I read online earlier today that this movie was like it was written by a deer or gorilla studying humans <laughs> and then writing a script how they as an outsider envision human interactions. That's interesting because that's kind of how Tommy was so loose in this. Exactly, kind of. <laughs> it's a very Sorry. alien take on human uh, interaction. But the huge debate right now everyone's having is was this a movie intentionally written to be bad and funny? Right. Or was it just a movie that ended up being that bad and that funny? I'm in the latter camp personally. Me too. I'm, I'm throwing my hat in that camp. A, Tommy initially billed this as a, a uh, drama. drama. Made it very clear he thought it was a drama. It, it was only after it became a midnight comedy run mm -hmm. that he began to rebuild as a dark comedy. Right. The second thing I think it shows is you could tell it was a deeply personal piece to him in some respects. It's a revenge, revenge plot. Piece, He's yeah. dealing with some issues here. I sense uh, a woman and a best friend of his might have hurt him quite seriously at one point in his life. Perhaps here in New Orleans, according to the mythos. But, <laughs> which is funny because the whole thing is set in San Francisco. Yeah. I mean, they use the shot of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge every five minutes to yeah. drive the point home. I think that that should be a, a drinking game somewhere in there. Every time oh, you see the bridge, you take a shot. Dude, you, you would die. <laughs> And, and every time Tommy utters a line that makes no sense, you take a shot. You need dead. <laughs> Probably. If you could finish the thirty one hour thirty one yeah. minutes in this movie alive, you would be the next Genghis Khan. It's it's kind of got the problem that uh, sorry, go ahead. I can't remember the movie's name. <sighs> uh, it's just a very bizarre, very random, and the overuse of stock footage. Mm -hmm. It yeah. It really was just kind of, I mean, if you take out the bad acting, the bad writing, it would be right. most guilty being bland, I think. Yeah, because it was line after line with, even when they, you know, Tommy Wiseau's character was the only one that tried to put any feeling behind his lines, mm -hmm. and you still didn't feel it. Well, mostly because he was mumbling everything. <laughs> so badly yeah and and it's, like I said you can't feel anything with any of these characters because there's such a huge disconnect between what I would consider reasonable human behavior in the situation the breast right. cancer scene I think is the ultimate illustration of that problem. that's one of them yeah the mom comes in <laughs> says she definitely has breast cancer and then they move on yeah um, that's not an issue they ever raise again. No. That's early in the movie. That's not a spoiler yeah. or anything. It's just no. they raise it in the first 15 minutes. Never come back. No. And 
She has cancer. She's fine. She'll be fine. Everything will work They've out. They've been carrying yeah. lots of people lately. Oh, yeah. Nicole, Nicole. It's like, okay, well, all right. We're just going to, why put that in if we're just going to drop it? I don't know. And it's like the other subplot where um, Lisa accused Johnny of hitting her. Yeah. What was that about? I have no, I have a, no idea why she did it, what she stood to gain from it. Not unless she was just seeing how far her mother's taking Johnny's side would go. Well, I mean, then she should have just said, okay, he didn't actually hit me, you're just a bitch. Uh, yeah. Should have, uh, th that's part of what I'm talking about, though. There's no ration, no reason, no logic. No. Not even emotional logic behind this behavior. It's just no. a random series of emotional events with no connection. Yeah. That's what the room is. I think that's a good synopsis of what the room actually is with bad acting, bad writing, and some laughably, laughably bad scenes in it. I mean, there yeah. there were some scenes that were hurtless, but I gotta say this. If I had to watch this on DVD, it would be up there with like The Fist of the Vampire and other movies we have watched on DVD. But Yeah, and I guess I'll, I'll throw on my line that I mentioned previously that okay, you and okay. I have talked about. That, uh, yeah, if we had to watch this on DVD, I would be using spoons for Lewis Black. S reason for using spoons. We'll leave it there. Um, check out Lewis Black's bit on spoons if you want any yeah. further details on that. <laughs> you have been warned. <laughs> but, I mean, it's still not the worst movie I've ever seen. I've seen no. way worse. Fist of the Vampire is still worse than this. Yeah, it's still less watchable. Um... You know, it, it's not as terrible as people play it up to be. I know it's got that reputation. And that's the thing. A lot of these movies like this get these reputations mm -hmm. for being such bad movies. But the truth is they get these reputations, I think, because they're a bad movie, but they're still good enough to really latch on to and make fun of and have a good time with it. Right. And, I mean, I cannot leave a theater of over, what, 60 people? It was way more than that. Okay. Close to 100. 100. 100 so people. I can't leave a theater with all of them having had a really great time mm -hmm. and enjoying themselves and think that it was a bad movie. Was it was at least that bad? Yeah. I mean, I mean it was some a, people found a way to find yeah. joy in it. And, and to me, the testament of a movie at the end of the day is how much entertainment you got out of it. Right. If you feel like you were entertained for those 90 minutes, the movie yeah. succeeded. If you've carried away other things from it and you've got additional, so much the better. Right. That's what great says. That's good cinema versus great cinema right yeah. there. You know, but it, it filled the 90 minutes. It entertained us. We had a good time with it. And yeah, it was because it was a bad movie, but it still was entertaining. It still met the burden. And it was entertaining because of the crowd. Yes, and the crowd definitely sold it. I, I, I would, I, I'm not looking on Amazon to buy the DVD version no, of this. No. And I'm, in fact, we're not even putting that in the little Amazon box on our site. We don't want you to buy that one, even if it does make us money. We don't want you to buy that no, one. No, the only way that I can see to enjoyably watch this Ranking movie game. is... Well, okay. The only <laughs> two ways... Blacking out before the end. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, no, the end is where everybody cheered. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. <laughs> but, but, no... Is to go to a, a movie theater like the Britannia for yeah. a midnight showing with all of the crazy fans and, and see it that way. And all the guys dressed in red dresses and yeah. the Mark beards and everything. Yeah. It was awesome. It, it, was, it was a good time. Uh, the crowd makes it, but definitely not the worst movie. I think, you know, the uncut man of the hands of fate would be worse. Probably. Um, <laughs> You know, it's a bad sound when MST3K has to cut 20 minutes out of your movie just because it's so bad they can't even make fun of it. Yeah. That's probably a bad sign. But, I mean, there are worse movies out there, quite frankly. It, it, it definitely falls in the so bad it's good category. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's bad, but at the same time, it's got good, so you can't call it the worst movie the past 10 years because I can think of some movies that were just so bad. We won't even review them. They needed to be shot and killed. <laughs> the movie. That too. And probably the director. And some of the people involved. Well, any yeah, it's a little too far, but anyway. not for some reason. Any final thoughts, though? Um, no. Hope you enjoyed our uh, yeah. before and afters. So. Yeah. Can we go back to horror now? Please. Please. Okay. So that is the room from what? That is the room from the Britannia. And outside of the Britannia, I heard guys talking about garbage horror, and we are going to watch Birdemic. Uh, probably tonight, actually. Yeah. At this pace. So, yeah, 
don't challenge us to, ne- to not watch a movie. No. It's just suicide. You're all <laughs> that. So, it just causes us pain when you do that because then we have to see it. <laughs> we, are the, we are the ultimate masters of, here, smell this, it stinks. But <laughs> yeah. in cinema. Well, on that note, that's, our, that's the room. That's our plans for the future as far as, I don't know if we're going to review Birdemic or not. We haven't made that decision yet, obviously. Yeah, I haven't even seen it. We have to see it to see whether or not it can be reviewed or whether or not it goes into If a, you had any idea the number of these movies we watch and how few we review, you'd understand. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was our thingy for the room. What the hell was this? Who cares? It's done. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're tearing me apart! I'm leaving that in. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, afterthoughts. It wasn't the worst. <laughs> Ooh. That's not good. It wanted to be, but it didn't meet that standard. I mean, I've seen plenty of dark comedies and it wasn't, you know, the worst. Yeah. Even though that's the main objective for most dark comedies. Yeah. But it was really good and it got me turned on the whole way through. <laughs> Except for Johnny's like flabby ass. Like he needs to work on that. That's the yeah. reason why that bitch didn't love him because his <laughs> ass was not firm. It yeah. was like jello and it had cellulite and shit on. Nobody wants that, okay? So I think the main moral of this story of is don't let your ass get flabby because then people just don't want you and you're useless no matter how much money you make, okay? Okay. And that's it. Fair enough. All right, thank you.